hello guys welcome to my youtube channel um so in this video tutorial we're going to continue the food delivery app and uh this way we ended last time we we created the other pages that we need for our application and so far we have nothing in the in the pages we created in the last video tutorial we just have a text um describing the page we are in and that's all that's all we have so far so today we are going to design the other page here and then we will see how we can go about it so i will show you um a picture of how the other page looks like so this this uh, an image of how the other page should look like so we are going to um create a list of food items i mean design the list of food items and also we can design the the total and then also create this button and then we move on to the next page so let's do this so this is the the code for the other page we have just a text at the center and nothing else so we are going to do we are going to design the the other page and if you look at this we actually we can use a column or a list view or we can use a list view and then a column inside a list view or a column and then a list view inside inside a column so i will show you why i'm saying this so you let's just begin so you begin by creating a list view so you can just go ahead and delete this one and then say a list view and and then we know that we um the the direction of our list view should be vertical so we can say scroll direction and then as is dot vertical yeah by default it is in the vertical direction by as i like to specify the direction of the list view um and then we can have our children so in the children if you look at the design that we have here the children will be our list of items the user order so that's what we are going to design but i want to separate that code into uh into a different rigid so in my rigid folder here i'll create a new file called order cards or oh, card okay card is okay and then we can continue from here let's just import the flutter package and then we can go ahead and say other card extends the stateless widget and we can override the build method oh sorry we can override the build method let's um up i don't know why i'm um, okay So we have this and we can return now for now so let's figure out why uh, what we need for um, the design of the card item so you can see this is a card item so obviously we will have to return a card and then we can also give um, some elevation to the card looking at the bottom of the card here and then we will we will have to arrange our items in a row because when you look at this um, button here and the image here and then the description here or the food the name of the food here and then this button they are all in a row so we will need a row and then when we get to where the name and then the price and then these toppings are you will need a column so we are going to need a row and then a column in a row so that's what we are going to do so first we need a card i a card widget and then we need so a, a row and then whenever we need a column we will use them so let's just do that so let's just return our card widget um widget here from the image we can see we need a card and then in our chart will be a row so we are going to arrange all our items in a row and then that's exactly what we need so we are just going to design this one first here 
this one I mean the button here first and looking at this button the technique I use or the skills I use in designing this button is actually using icons in a row and then at, uh, icons in a sorry in a column and then a text in the middle of the I mean of the column so that's what we do and then I just use a container for this one I mean for the design so we can have our row and then we can put our children there so first we need a container here and then the container can have a chart but let's first give um, the height let's specify the height and then the width of the the container so this one i'll just use um a height of 75 and a weight of 45 um 45 so i can also check here we need um we need to specify if you look at the design here we need to specify our widgets or our items in a, in a column so i will need a column as a chart here and then i will also specify the children of the column so the children of the columns are the buttons that we are going to use so we are going to use um inkwell for 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 the buttons you can also use gesture detector for that but i'm going to use a uh, inkwell for these arrow buttons so it just are uh, just icons that i wrap in a uh, inkwell widget so that when you click it will perform as a, a function or it, it will do something actually so let's just do that let's just create our icon here let me say icons dot i think arrow sorry arrow um i think up arrow key arrow up here and then we can also have our icon icons dot keyboard arrow down yeah so this is what i need and then let me just save this one for now and also save this page for now and uh, we have nothing inside our code i mean nothing inside our app now because we've changed the center to a list view so let me just import this one here let me see widgets or let me just custom widgets so these are the widgets that we design so widgets and then i can import the other cards here for now so in my list of widgets i can call the other card here i mean create an instant of the other card here and then when i save let's see what we get i think we have nothing here okay because we just have these arrows and they don't show anything okay yeah it's here we have it here so so far this is what we have and this doesn't look nice but we can see that we have the arrows in the in 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 a in a column form so we have to um put our test in between and then make sure that our arrow is clickable so let me just put the test here and say zero so this is the trick i used and then we can put our test in between so you can see now our test is in between the arrows so now we have to make the design around the 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 arrows and then we also have to make sure that it's clickable so here i will quickly take it oh, let me just do it this way let me use this side and then wrap with um wrap with a widget and a widget okay wrap with a new widget and i'll use the inkwell um let me just put this one down okay let me um do this okay oh i want this up here okay so i can set it on top listener and then i can just put something there 
and then I, I have to do the same for this one let me just quickly copy this whole thing and then put this one here and then change this one to down okay so our our arrows are non clickable you see you can see the um the effect when you click on it okay so we can go ahead and then design the border around the arrows that we 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 have in this design when you look at the design we have um i mean a border around it so that's what we are going to do now so let me just quickly do that so to do that we can um go into our container and then set a border on the container and then um also give it a border radius because if you look at the design there's a border radius there so let's just do that so i can oh, i'm sorry let's just do decoration and say both decoration both decoration and we can decide to um check we have the border element here um, or the border argument here we can set border dot all and in this border dot all we can specify the color the style and then the width of the other border we want so the width i'm going to use just 0 0.2 and then the color i will specify the color to be colors dot gray so when i save this let's see what we get um if you, you can see we have a border around uh, our arrows i mean our arrows and then our text here so we have a border around it but we also need a border radius so let's just do that a border radius and say border radius dot circular and then we can specify this border radius that we want to use i mean and then let's see what we get so you can see we have our border radius on it and that's exactly what we want but um i think we can increase the test and then we can also increase the size of the icon and then we can also give some padding um uh, uh padding around our list i mean list view so let me just go into the other page here and then in the other page we can specify pardon here and then say edge insert dot symmetric edge insert dot symmetric and then we can specify horizontal um i need a horizontal right so 10.0 and let's see we should have uh oh yeah yeah okay so i have it at the top there now i have um pardon on the left and then on the right but then we can see our antenna has moved to the top there so let's forget about it for now because we will put um an up bar there so let's forget about that one now we just need we just need a pardon on the left and then on the right for now so we have this and we have that we can also check for let's go into our other card here we can also increase the size of the icon so let's just do that let's change the the font size of the text here let's say font oh sorry style and then we can specify the style, the style and then we can set the font size to 18.0 and uh, let's see how it looks it looks like okay so it's big enough and then i also want to change the color of the icons so let me just change the color of the icon so i'll use i have a color i want to use so you can go ahead and use any color you want um so I oh, can just specify the color I want to use. So this um, D3, D3, you can also use this color if you want, but you can specify any color you want. And then I want to do the same for the other one. I'll just copy it and then 
come to the um, here and also specify the same color and then save let's see what we get okay so you can see the color is okay but let's use the same color for the border um, instead of gray you can just go ahead and use the same color for that okay so we have our color there uh, now I want some padding inside our card item so before this I'll wrap the row with a uh, pad and rigid okay so I think add padding yeah and uh, the pattern I want I think not all but I want to use metric and I also want to use horizontal instead of um, no, no, I want to use, um, I think my horizontal is okay. So let's see. Um, it still looks the same. Okay. There's a change, but I think I need to use, I think we need a pattern at the top and then the bottom to, okay. Let me look at, okay. We need a pattern at the top and at the bottom. So, then I should make it all here. Say all and then make sure. No, let me just because I'll use a different. So let's do the vertical and then make it 20 instead. So that we specify different size for the top and bottom. But um okay. 20 looks too big. Let's just go back to 10. And that will be okay for yeah yeah i think this this is okay for now so we didn't change the color of our text here so let's just use the same color we use for the other ones and let's okay so i think this one is okay so so far we have our um, control buttons here which controls the the number of items uh, i mean food items the person uh, the you or the user wants so this is the control we have for that one so that means if you click on the arrow i mean up arrow it will change the price or increase the price and if you click on the down arrow it will decrease the price so that's what we have and looking at this we need to um bring in the image and then we have to bring in the name here so let me look at the length of this video Okay, I think we can add an image and then I will continue with a different video. I don't like making long videos. It becomes very difficult to edit. Okay, so let's just add an image. So we can add our image. Um, let me look at this. So we have this, our row, and then we have our container here, which is our control button. So we can just go ahead and then add a new container which will cater for our image so we can just go ahead and then consider the decoration and then i'll use um the creation and then we can specify the image that we want to use here so we use the creation image here the creation image here and in the decoration image we can now specify our image so let's just use any image for now so we know in my image folder we have asset images and then we have this image i think launch.jpg is okay and then we can specify this image so let's see how it looks like um nothing appears and i'm not getting any error but i can't see the image okay let's specify the height and then the weight for our image uh, container first because without specifying i don't think we will see anything and then let's see what we get now okay so we have our image here so let me just put um a space between the control button and then our image so I'll use a size box 
and because we are in a row we are going to use the width instead of a height we are going to use a width and uh, let's see what we get so we can have we can see we have a space between them now i want this uh, image to be circular as you can see from this side we have to make it circular and then add some box shadow there so let me just do that um this image here this is the image here we can go ahead and add um border radius so oh sorry border radius yeah and then we can go ahead and say border radius mm, the circular and i think 10 point not i think let me just do 35 let's take um the radius to be half of the width so 35 is okay uh let's see what we get okay we have something funny we instead of uh you see this thing is in the different shape because of our image we have to specify the fit of our image to be box fit that cover yeah and that will make it perfect okay so now we have our image in a circular form so then we have to add the the box shadow and then we can move from there so let's just add the box shadow so we add our box shadow let me show you box shadow and this takes a list of box shadows that you want to use so let me just put there so we can have our list of box shadow here but we just need one box shadow here and then this you can see it takes in the blur radius and then the color and then the offset so the color is simply the color we want as a box shadow so we can just go ahead and say colors the block you can use any color you want and then the blur radius is how much or how much you want to blur the color that you are using so i can specify it to be 5.0 um this is supposed to be colors 5.0 and then here we also need to specify the offset so this is exactly how you want to position your box shadow so the offset is used for positioning so we can use the offset um class or rigid we can use that one and then this one takes in the x and then the y so if you if you know um um simple graphs you know we have the x axis and then the y axis so this is basically the horizontal and then the vertical um direction that we we want to position our box shadow respective to the the rigid that we want to put the box shadow under so we have i think on the x axis i will just specify 0, 0.0 and on the on the y axis i will specify 5.0 and let's see how it looks like um so you can see we have the box shadow as black and it's right um at the bottom of the rigid that we are using uh, that's our image and then you can see so uh, what i did with the offset is to um, move the box shadow down you see this is the vertical right from top to bottom is vertical and then from left to right is uh is horizontal so if we specify the horizontal to be 5.0 then that means this will shift to the right you see this shifted to the right so you can manipulate it anyhow you want and then you can get different um, directions for your um, box shadow so i will i will stop this video here and then create another video to continue because um this has taken a long time to record and then we we can take it from there so i will I will see you guys in the next tutorial and then we, we will take it from there. So let me just take this one off and then back to how it used to be. So that's exactly what I want. Okay. Thank you guys.
see you in the next video tutorial